Hello and welcome back. This is episode 19 of my vlog series about creating the art for a 2D video game. And today's episode is going to be about revision. To revise or not to revise. And I am especially talking about personal projects and when should you go back and fix something and when should you just leave it alone. But before I get into today's topic too far, I just want to let you know what I'm working on here in the background which actually is um, fairly applicable to today's discussion. So as a brief recap, if you are new to the channel, or just a reminder for those of you who have been watching for a while, in our game, your character starts out in this really shabby, run-down castle. And up, into this po uh, up until this point, we've been using this sprite, which I'll show up on the screen here, as the castle that your character starts out in. However, as we started working on this game, and I started to develop the kingdom more, and I started making more and more buildings and other assets to go in your kingdom, stylistically, it started um, to look very different from everything else. Um, to the point that I think it kind of, uh, it stood out, but not in a good way. So while the rest of the buildings in your kingdom, like, you know, the hovels, the tavern, and the barn, and whatnot, they all kind of share a similar aesthetic where they've got like white sort of plaster walls. They might have a little bit of stonework, but it's mostly like white plaster with bits of um, just like wood trim and thatched roofs. Your castle, on the other hand, was this big, even though it was very run down, it's this big stone structure with like blue tile roof and it just didn't match. And I also don't think it was quite as effective from a storytelling point of view as it could have been. And so we recently decided to go back and basically revise and change the castle. And it also served, you know, some practical reasons too. Um, in our game, eventually you're going to be able to upgrade your building. So while everything in your, in your kingdom at first starts out as, you know, plaster, thatched roof, you know, very medieval sort of buildings, eventually you're going to be able to upgrade them to um, better materials, you know, things like stone and brick, and everything is just going to look nicer. And so we needed sort of a level one castle as well that could eventually be upgraded along with everything else. Um, but it also serves, you know, a storytelling standpoint too. I feel like the old castle, the way it was all run down and dilapidated, was, um, it almost looks like, I mean, it looks run down, but I it almost think it looks like maybe there was a war or something that sort of tore the castle apart where I'm not sure that was really what we were going for exactly. Um, you know, we don't really want the, the castle to look like battle damaged. <laughs> I really wanted it just to look super primitive instead as something that um, compared to all of your surrounding neighbors would look like just very backcountry um, and very simplistic. And so I went through, you know, scoured the internet because, I mean, when you when you think of a castle, you don't generally think of primitive. I mean, we think of, um, yeah, you know, these big, strong fortress type structures. So I was like, well, how do I do a small castle, like a small primitive castle? And so, you know, I went scouring the internet for inspiration and you can see it, you know, up in the corner. I have this picture that I found. It was this really cool little castle. I mean, it's basically just a keep. It's a keep with a tower and a moat in Belgium and it was this you know tiny little medieval castle and the moment I saw that I was like yes you know that that's exactly what the feel I'm going for so I snagged that as my main inspiration photo and of course I then um, changed some of the uh, j just some of the finishings on the castle to look more like you know what we have in our game so I gave it like a thatched roof and you know white plastery sort of walls and a little bit of wood trim and I think you know it blends in much better now than uh, the original castle that we had. So that leads me back into today's topic, which is to revise or not to revise. And I hear this dilemma a lot uh, among artists or other creatives, and they're working on a project and there's something that bugs them that they've done previously, and they're wondering whether they should go back and fix it or just leave it as is and just, you know, go um, carry on. And the answer depends a lot on who you ask. If um, you ask a writer, Writers, I mean, they, if there's something that's off in their manuscript, they will go back and they will write and rewrite and revise and polish and scrub clean until that manuscript is absolutely sparkling. But if you were to ask, say, like a web cartoonist, an experienced web cartoonist, they would say, no, absolutely not. Do not go down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> the, 
you see this a lot with web cartoonists who are just starting out so they get like let's say 50 pages into their comic and just as a natural byproduct of just drawing all the time their style really um, it tightens up to the point to where those early pages um, really start to bug them because they don't look as good as their later pages and so they put their comic on hiatus so they can go back and they can redraw those early pages um, so they will match you know the latest work and um, at the same time you know you'll get advice from uh, I'm thinking of like Jake Parker who his famous mantra is finish not perfect and he finishes a lot of stuff and a lot of artists have adopted that mantra finish not perfect because perfect doesn't exist as I have discussed in previous a previous video and it's better to have a finished product than a perfect product because uh, perfect is a moving target and then at the on the other hand uh, if you were to ask my sculpture teacher back in college he would always say that starts are so much more important than finishes. He would make us restart our sculptures, you know, tear them down and restart them half a dozen times because he said, you know, once you can get that, if you can get a perfect start on your project, the rest of it will go so much more smoothly and you won't have to go back and try and repair things. And so you'd end up starting a sculpture six times and only finishing it once. So what's the answer here? Do you go back and revise or do you just leave it? And I have come up with a formula that hopefully will help you to decide. And so what I try and ask myself when I'm, you know, faced with this dilemma is who will this bother most? Will it bother my audience or will it bother me? So for example, if you go back to like, um, you know, let's say you're working on a book, you're working on a manuscript, if you have plot holes, or if your characters are acting in inconsistent ways, or if uh, you've got really choppy, um, stilted dialogue, it might bother you, but it's really going to bug your audience. <laughs> they, will, um, they will be thrown out of your story so fast if, uh, if things aren't aligning properly, if they, if they question the character's motives, if they feel like they don't know the character that they're reading about um, because the character acts in unpredictable ways they they're gonna be thrown out of the story really fast so yes that is a case where you need to go back and revise but on the other hand in like a web cartoon if you're working on you know you're uploading a page or two pages every week your audience is much more concerned with what happens next than they are ever going to be with what those original pages look like so, I mean, and if that's the issue, that your issue is with the appearance of the original pages, then just plow ahead. Like, your audience doesn't care, you're the only person who cares. Now, if there are, like, plot holes early on, things that need repaired, then you, yes, you might have to go back and, uh, and do some tweaking. But if it's just a purely aesthetic, you know, issue, then just leave it alone, carry on, because your audience, uh, they want more story. They don't want you to go on hiatus for two, three, four months um, while you go back and fix those pages. And I think there is something to be said for just learning to finish things. A lot of people are good starters. You know, they get really excited about a project and they are really motivated to start something, but they eventually, the um, when the fun runs out and it becomes hard work, they have a really hard time actually carrying it through to the finish. And so sometimes I think the most valuable lesson in a long-term sort of personal project is just finishing something. And that's a case where, say it's your very first book, um, the chances that you're going to publish it or share it beyond you know, your immediate friends and family are small. Then it's a case where it's probably just as valuable, if not more valuable, just to finish it and then start another one. That would be where my, my sculpture teacher's advice, I think, would come in handy. Finish the one book, learn to finish something, but then start again with a stronger start. So in trying to decide whether you should revise something or just leave it alone and move on, I think it also helps to um, decide who your intended audience is. So, and that will help you to answer the question, you know, is this thing going to bother them or not? So if you are trying to attract, you know, art directors and potential clients with your project, then you want to make sure that everything in the project is at, at least displays a level of mastery that will get you clients or that will get attention. On the other hand, if your audience are 
uh, mainly friends and family, or if your intent is mainly to entertain, chances are your audience is going to be more concerned with the overall experience than they are with the necessary, like with the level of polish and the level of finish on everything. And that's kind of where more the category that we fall into, I think, with this game. Um, so, you know, going back to our little dilemma, if, if it was purely, the castle design was purely an aesthetic sort of issue, we probably could have left it alone. Is it going to bother anyone? Not really. Nobody else is probably going to be overly bothered by the design of the castle. However, we do feel that by changing it, we are presenting a stronger story and also um, hopefully improving the whole gameplay experience because you'll be able to then upgrade it to something nicer later. And in this case too, this was not an, uh, a revision that took me very long to do. If it was something that took, you know, w took a week or two out of my schedule, then no, I probably would have just left it alone and said it was fine, you know, finished not perfect. But in this case, it took me a couple of days probably to redraw this thing, um, you know, maybe a couple of two, three hours, I think, maybe to do the whole thing start to finish. And that's really not that big of an imposition. So redoing it, I feel like actually um, helped the gameplay experience as a whole, even if it's just in a small way. So I was able to justify that revision. So hopefully this helps you make some decisions if you are working on a project and trying to decide how to proceed. Obviously this is like a multifaceted issue and one answer is not going to work for everybody, but hopefully giving you a bit of a formula to go through will help you to decide what is best for you and your project. So if you've enjoyed this, I hope you will be returning again next week. Of course I will be back next Friday as always with the next installment of this vlog series. And until then, I hope you have a great week.